Hi folks, this is Rockman Pat with Geotox, part of Northwest Treasures. And uh, by the way, if you like our Geotalk today, I want to urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, I don't know about you, but I am itching to get outside and do more rock hounding and exploration. And it looks like we're kind of moving into that season, so I'll kind of kick things off and give you a few tips for doing some rock hounding. Uh, now, a lot of you might be wrestling with, boy, how do I identify the rocks that I am finding? So I'm going to give you a few tips on that uh, today, and I want to start in my own rock garden here. Now, some of you might remember uh, we did a geo talk on the rocks that were outside our house on the side of the house there, and uh, my wife gave me the ultimatum, do something with them. And so one day I just got energetic and I used them to build a rock garden right here. You can see them uh, up and down this little trench here. Uh, put all of those rocks, I think there were 75 buckets, five gallon buckets. And I hauled those and dumped those in here and they make a nice rock garden. Most of these rocks are from the Cascades and uh, Montana and Wyoming. So I'm gonna just pick out a few uh, that uh, you'll probably find on some of your travels. Now, in Washington, of course, we have a lot more volcanic rock. In some places in Washington, volcanic rock covers the uh, surface as much as two miles deep. So that's a lot of volcanic rock. And what do we do with that here in Washington? Well, we use it to build things. I want you to look at this wall here. It forms part of the backdrop of uh, our house. Uh, basalt lava and um, it is abundant in Washington. Now in your state you might have more sedimentary rock for instance if you're in the Midwest you're gonna have a lot more limestone but out here we have a lot more volcanic rock so that's primarily what I get involved in out here but I want you to notice something about uh, basalt here you know, when you divide rock types up, they're really quite easy to recognize if you don't get too many confused terms in the way here. But volcanic rock is generally what we call fine-grained rock. In other words, you're going to see a color to it, but not necessarily see the minerals in it. And, uh, you know, the minerals are those things that give the rocks their color and uh, a lot of their characteristics. In some rocks, you can see those minerals, and in some rocks, you can't. Uh, some of that is involved in the chemistry or in how they're formed. Volcanic rocks, of course, we've observed those, and we know how they're formed. They're formed from hot, molten lava, and it hardens into, in this case, a very hard rock. Now, you'll notice this rock is very dark, and uh, the reason for that is because of the dark minerals that form it. Uh, basalt, though, because it contains a lot of iron, interacts with the environment, and there's a chemical reaction that takes place due to the oxygen, and uh, it interacts with the iron in the basalt rock, and you can see a lot of this stuff starts to turn orange, and it literally starts to rust. So we have rusting rocks here because of the iron. Another thing you can uh, do too is you can perform a little magnetic test on it. I've tested a lot of volcanic rocks here, uh, dark volcanic rocks, and have discovered uh, a good deal of iron in it just by way of magnetism. It's attracted to magnets. So this is basalt, and you can expect it to look like this. It's a, a dark rock that, uh, that you can't see the minerals. Now, down here, there's another type of basalt. This one's a little crumbly, but it's, it's also very interesting. You can see the it's a dark rock. It has the same kind of fine grain texture uh, in the matrix. But notice the little crystals in it, little pockets of crystals. Well, this is uh, pretty typical of what happens. Uh, basalt lava after it's hardened. Sometimes it produces little cavities of crystals we call zeolites and those are made up of different kinds of minerals. Uh, so this one we call it an uh, migdaloidal basalt because the migdals 
the pockets of crystals in it. Uh, but then there are some uh, volcanic rocks that do have a lot of minerals that are showing. Now this one you might get confused because you can see that, boy, you can see a lot of minerals in that. But notice in this rock, the minerals all have the same basic shape. They're all kind of square or rectangular. The matrix in which they show up is a fine grain matrix. So this is a, a lava that has pretty much of the same kind of mineral, except for these little black things. These are hornblende crystals. And then these are feldspar crystals, these nice blocky shaped crystals. And this is a type of lava that shows up on the outskirts of Yellowstone, some of the volcanic stuff up there. Um, walk up here just a ways. Not sure where I threw everything, but I can recognize it. And uh, it's another type of fine grain volcanic rock. But this is much lighter, you can see, compared to this. So this has a lot lighter minerals in it, even though you can't recognize the minerals, can't see them. We know that it's predominantly the lighter colored minerals. So probably a lot higher in quartz and potassium feldspar. Those are the light colored minerals. But notice the little wavy lines in here. That's really characteristic of rhyolite lava, which uh, uh, flows very, very slowly because of the quartz in it. And uh, so many uh, examples of rhyolite lava, the flow patterns are preserved. This is not the case with the salt. The salt doesn't really have much uh, quartz in it. And so it tends to flow much quicker than the rhyolite lava. Uh, so come down here now, before I get too far afield, I did want to show, we do have a few uh, sedimentary rocks in here. Um, and I wanted to show those to you. We don't have many out here, but we do have some. And uh, actually those are down here a ways. Here we go. One of the dead giveaways for a sedimentary rock is the earth tone color. Generally sedimentary rocks, although not always, you can have some very dark ones. Coal is an example of a dark sedimentary rock. There's dark shale and, uh, but generally speaking, sedimentary rocks have an earth tone color to them. And this is a, a type of sedimentary rock. We call it, it's, co it's a uh, company name or a trade name of of Biggs Jasper, it's really, uh, it's really more of a silicified mud. So it's got some quartz in it, but uh, very pretty. Uh, most of it will tumble up and produce a nice fine uh, gemstone. Some of it does not. It just smooths and that's about it. But those are, we have that, that's predominantly in Oregon, Northern Oregon. And uh, Let's go down here ways. Ooh. Here's an example of a metamorphic rock. Now you'd think, well, that's a lighter colored rock and it's got layers in it, so is that not sedimentary? And sedimentary rock, the layers are generally, if there are layers, are generally much more even and evenly distributed. This is really more characteristic of a metamorphic rock, a rock that's been changed. This is a type of marble and uh, this is a rock that's been changed and they think through heat and pressure. Now of the, the rocks, only the volcanic rocks and primarily the basalt rocks and the andesitic rocks, rocks that come from uh, Mount St. Helens have been observed forming. Many of the uh, other kinds of rocks have not been observed, metamorphic rocks have not been observed forming. We make some assumptions about them but they've not been observed. Uh, most of the sedimentary formations have not been observed, although we can produce a few sedimentary formations artificially, like concrete and uh, cobblestone and so on in building. It's really not true sedimentary rocks and true sedimentary formations. Not all sedimentary rocks have fossils in them, although that's where you're going to find the fossils sedimentary rocks like limestone 
sandstone, shale, siltstone, those all uh, can contain fossils, but not all do. So let's come on down here. Let me give you an example. These rocks, ones that look like they're peppered and spotted, these are what we call plutonic rocks. And you see a couple right down here. One, as you can see, the black crystals in it and one over here. Now one is obviously much lighter colored than the other one. This is a true granite right here. And it has very similar characteristics that the rhyolite lava has that I, that I showed you. This other one, uh, you can see the dark minerals in it, but then you see a lot of this white stuff. This is a, what we call a plagioclase feldspar. Sometimes when you get out and look for rocks, you're gonna find them tumbled like this that's really pretty indicative of some kind of water action involved and sometimes to really see what's inside the rock you got to break it open and that reveals uh, this rock type here called granodiorite which uh, has an even pretty even mix those are plutonic rocks by the way are characterized by evenly mixed mineral crystals on the inside they're very different than what I showed you up here. Let's go back here. And uh, Lutonic rocks a lot more evenly mixed than, for instance, lava rocks that has a lot of big crystals in it. You can really see the difference here. These two are very different rocks. This one is much more evenly distributed minerals. And this one they're scattered all over the place. And you can see through those and see the fine grain matrix, which would give it away as a volcanic rock. This, the entire matrix is uh, made up of mixed, these mixed minerals that give it its characteristic as a plutonic rock. Volcanic rock, we actually call this a porphyritic rock because the minerals are really visible. This one is a plutonic rock. This is a rock from the Cascades. This rock here is from uh, outskirts of Yellowstone, as I mentioned. Now, basalt can also be filled with holes. And those are gas holes. So you can see this. These are gas holes. And if you look real closely, you can see there's fine uh, feldspar crystals in it. That this went through or it has a lot of gas problems so we call it vesicular basalt and then some of the minerals are exposed in it these little needle shaped things which are pretty indicative of sodium feldspar so now we've talked a little bit about uh, sedimentary volcanic plutonic metamorphic um, and it just takes some practice and a little bit of uh, seeing differences among them to develop a, a pretty good expertise. Uh, if you like, on my website, if you haven't seen it yet, I do have a very nice kit called Rock Identification Made Easy. And it's got the field guide. It's got a practical instruction book with it. And then representatives of all the different rock types and rock forming minerals. And that is available online. That would make a nice starter kit for the summer. And uh, who knows, pretty soon you could drive your mother nuts collecting buckets and buckets of all of these kinds of rocks. And then uh, after a number of years of doing it, you can build a nice rock garden. And my wife, I think, is very pleased that I did this. Uh, and I'm happy for that. <laughs> So anyway, that's uh, our geo talk for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and take a look at our website for more instruction. Thanks for joining us today. Hope your summer goes well.